Hello everyone, welcome back to Judo Rose. In today's video, I wanted to share with you some of the best new designer fragrance launches. There have been a lot of great launches this year and I have shortlisted some designer fragrances that I think are a 10 out of 10 and are definitely worth checking out. Okay, first up we have two fragrances from Dior. The first one, you probably already know what it is. It is Miss Dior Rose Essence. This is a beautiful new addition and I think it's a limited edition to the Miss Dior range and it is super different to like the original Miss Dior DNA. So the original DNA being like a sweeter fragrance, I personally don't really like that original DNA. I much prefer the fresher Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet for example and Miss your rose essence is also on the fresher side. Now this fragrance I like to describe as being a really bougie rose water. It is made of centifolia rose, which comes from Dior's rose fields in Grasse, and is one of the most expensive roses used in fragrances. So that also explains, oh my gosh, did I just break? I just broke the freaking cap. I just broke the cap. That's not cool. That's really not cool. I cannot believe that the cap has come off of this fragrance. This is incredible. I'm doing a 10 out of 10 designer fragrance video and part of the packaging has come off of the fragrance. I don't even know if I can salvage this and get it off. Like it's stuck, like the metallic neck that covers this plasticky thing is stuck in the cap. Okay. Let me just tell you about the fragrance really quickly. I am a bit disappointed with this, but anyways, the fragrance itself is a beautiful, fresh rose water scent. You have, as I said, Centifolia Rose. It's complemented with some woods. It's incredible. This smells like fresh, dewy rose petals, a really highly qualitative rose water fragrance. It's bougie because it's expensive. And now knowing that the packaging is half broken, um, yeah, I'm not too sure how I feel about this, but if you want a delicate rose water scent, it's not the most long lasting perfume to be fair. It is one that lasts a few hours, but it's not necessarily intended to last forever either. If you have like some extra money lying around or if you want to treat yourself or treat a loved one, then this is a really lovely gift, but you really need to fix their packaging because for such an expensive fragrance, this is just not acceptable. Now I have another Dior perfume. It is part of the J'adore line. It is the new J'adore Parfum d'eau. And this fragrance formulation is super cool because it is alcohol free. Now on the website from Dior, you'll see that this perfume basically just contains flowers and water. And I think that's really cool because I like to overspray my fragrances and sometimes I get like a tingly irritation from the alcohol, especially like around my neck area where like the skin is more sensitive. And I really don't like that when I wear like a lot of perfume, the alcohol just stings my skin and I don't get it with this fragrance. So apart from its water-based formula, which also is like hydrating, the mist is super nice. This perfume smells lovely. If you like the original DNA of J'adore, you're gonna love this perfume. It is fresher, muskier, and cleaner smelling than the original. You're not gonna get like as much fruitiness as the Eau de Parfum. This fragrance is complemented with neroli. You still have the jasmine and there's also some Chinese magnolia. So if you like fresh, clean smelling white florals with like a musky edge, you're going to really enjoy this fragrance. The way that it sits on my skin, it lasts around like seven hours, which is really not that bad for a fragrance that, you know, is alcohol free and also more of a lighter take on the J'adore. That being said, it's not one that projects a lot and it's not as intense in terms of projection and like throw as the original perfume. But I would recommend you try if you like the original Eau de Parfum. Next up, we have the new Burberry for her Elixir de Parfum. I am loving this pink bottle. Like my entire office is baby pink and like with touches of cream and sage and this just fits my office theme perfectly. Oh, I just love it. It's so precious, so girly, such a fan. 
As for the fragrance itself, if you like the original perfume, you're going to really enjoy the Elixir. You have that similar DNA. However, with the Elixir, I would say it is a creamier, more gourmand version of the Eau de Parfum. You're going to get the berries, the strawberry, especially in this one, the strawberry I find to be quite strong, and the creaminess of vanilla right from the start. To me, this perfume smells like a really yummy strawberry milkshake. Yeah, it's sweet, it's girly, it's fun, and it's a fragrance that is easy to wear as well. You can wear on an everyday basis, during the day, during the night. It's not because it's an elixir that it's only like for evening wear. You can also easily wear it during the day. As far as the performance goes, this fragrance lasts 10 hours plus on my skin with a strong projection. So if you're looking for a strong fragrance, with that really likable Burberry Her DNA, definitely go for this one. Next, we have Alien Goddess Intense. This is the best fragrance from the Alien Goddess line, for sure. Don't get the original Alien Goddess, get the Intense. It is so much better. This fragrance is outstanding. So let me tell you how this fragrance smells like. It is your creamy white floral amber DNA with coconut going on. This smells heavenly. Let me tell you, this perfume, in my opinion, is a hybrid between the now discontinued Classique Essence de Parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier, which was this gorgeous, super sensual orange blossom fragrance that was sweet and like so intoxicating. And the other fragrance that it makes me think of is Utopia Vanilla Cocoa by Keali, this really intoxicating, creamy coconut fragrance. It's like a hybrid between the two perfumes. This is just like the perfect scent, in my opinion, when it comes to like coconut amber fragrances. It is so sexy, so intoxicating, pretty much lasts all day, so you're pretty good to go with this fragrance, actually. And the projection is strong for the first few hours and then goes into moderate. Really nice date night perfume, definitely. More of a summer number because it has coconut, but you know what, like may as well wear it also in the colder months if you want a little bit of that exotic tropical vibe, for sure. This is such a nice perfume, highly recommend it, especially if you like coconut. Speaking of like exotic escapism type of fragrances, there's a fantastic limited edition from Jean-Paul Gaultier which is La Belle Fleur Terrible. Now, I'm going to see if I can find this perfume for you. It was exclusive to, or is still exclusive to the fragrance shop in the UK. I will pop the link in the description box if I can find it. I'm not sure you can find it in the US, but the UK was at the fragrance shop. And this launched like earlier this year, which is why I'm saying I'm hoping that it's still available because there's nothing more annoying than talking about a perfume that you can't get. So La Belle Fleur Terrible, this one, in my opinion, is the best flanker yet of La Belle. La Belle, for those of you who don't know, is a like very strong, caramelized pear-like scent. So it is sweet, feminine, and sexy. A lot of ladies love it. It is. It has very much a mass appealing character. Not really my thing because I find it to be too syrupy, but it has the mass appeal. La Belle Fleur Terrible, super different to that DNA. It is fresher and lighter, and it doesn't have that like caramelized pear thing going on. <sighs> super nice. You have florals. I believe there's iris in this fragrance, but I don't really smell much of the iris, to be fair. There's like aquatic florals. That's how I would describe it. Like aquatic, fresh florals, indistinct, indescript, because it's not really, you can't really detect a specific note. Some fruitiness in the background and like almost like a light coconutty feel. There's something exotic about this perfume. I absolutely adore it. Like I would imagine wearing this like on a cruise ship in the summertime, roaming around the Amalfi Coast or something like that. It has like cruise chic vibes, which I absolutely adore. And it's also more long lasting than I thought it would be. Like this is because it's on the lighter side. This perfume actually lasts like around seven hours on my skin, which is super nice. And it projects really well throughout the day. If you can still find this perfume, I highly recommend you do. The bottle is super nice as well. Love the blue and also like the nice little detailing on the top. 
Very, very good fragrance from Jean-Paul Gaultier. I do hope that they make this maybe in the future a permanent addition because for summer, this is super nice. And finally, we have my beloved Chloe Nomade Eau de Parfum Naturel. I've talked a lot about this fragrance on my channel. This, in my opinion, is better than the original Chloe Nomade's. Such a good flanker, oh my goodness. It is outstanding and it is so qualitative. So this is a white floral with an interesting fruity and gourmand note. So the fruit in this fragrance is Mirabelle and this sweetness, the gourmand sweetness comes from date, which is such an unusual ingredient to find in designer fragrances. You typically find this more in like niche perfumes and still it's quite a niche ingredient to use. Usually it's like the vanilla, the tonka beans to sweeten up, up a perfume. But here you have a big dose of date, which is nice because it's not done in like a sticky way. It, it's, it just adds like a little bit of intrigue and complexity to the perfume, which I really adore. And then you have this gorgeous heart of jasmine. My goodness, the jasmine in this fragrance is so beautiful. It smells like a Mediterranean evening by the sea where you have like jasmine, like the scent of jasmine in the evening floating in the air. This is what this fragrance smells like to me. It has like that balmy jasmine quality. It is so beautiful. I would recommend wearing this fragrance in the summer evenings, not when it's too hot. I did find myself drawn to this perfume when it was like super hot in the summer because it is quite strong. It can be a little bit much, but on a colder summer evening, or even when you're transitioning, you know, between like summer and autumn, like that moment or like early autumn where it's still not too cold, I think this is a really nice one to wear more so like during the daytime. Yeah, very pretty fragrance from Chloe. If you love white florals like I do, I recommend you try it. A fragrance that is along a similar territory is Jasmine Sandback and Berry, Berry and Marigold by Jo Malone. This one is within a similar territory as Chloe Nomad Au Naturel, so if you like the Jo Malone one, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy this scent. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what is your favorite designer new fragrance release this year. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching and remember, spread the fragrant love.